My name is Nick McKenna. I am the Assistant Athletic Field Manager for the Texas A&M Athletic Department. Part of my role is that I'm jointly responsible for the care and maintenance of all of our athletic fields that our teams compete on. We do all of the maintenance for the grass playing surfaces, whether that's the mowing, the fertilizing, the watering. For Kyle Field, for example, we do all the painting of the lines and the logos for games. Um, my primary responsibility is to make sure that our grass playing surface is safe for our athletes to use on a daily basis. As a secondary level to that, obviously, um, part of our job revolves around the fan experience, so we're trying to provide this amazing, aesthetically visual appealing athletic surface. It's a balance of those two things, the safety of the field and the appearance of the field, all coming together. Soil science plays a very, very important role in my job and what we do. If our soil isn't right, our plant can't be right. And if our plant can't be right, the field can't be right. We have a unique feature here at Texas A&M with all of our athletic fields, is that because of the importance of the events that we host, like the games have to be able to occur regardless of the weather that is happening. So due to that, all of our fields are actually built and grown on a sand root zone. All of our fields have actually been amended where all that natural soil was removed and we have come in and we've built in an internal drainage system so that if we get three inches of rain the night before a football game or the night before a baseball game, we can still host the event without having to worry because it's designed to drain that water internally. So we have anywhere usually between 10 to 12 inches of pure sand and then we put our grass plant on top of that. With all of our fields being grown on a sand-based medium, uh, they don't hold nutrients as well as say like a native soil clay uh, that you might find in a, in a farm field. So because of that, uh, we have to be very selective about what fertilizers we use, how we use them, and the frequency in which we use them. So the only way for us to know what our grass plant actually needs is for us to take soil samples. So we'll pull samples periodically. Uh, I usually try and do at least four samples a year. So every two to three months, we go out and we'll collect small amounts from various areas all over our field so that it represents the entire area. Mix all those soil samples together and then we bag that up and we'll take it to our local soils lab here from like where a farmer might only go out and apply fertilizers to their field a couple times a year in a larger quantity. We do small quantities at very frequent. So every two weeks, we come out with a very light rate of fertilizer so that we're just spoon feeding a little bit to the plant, a little bit to the plant. Uh, we like for our fertilizer pellets to be a little smaller than normal, just because, so our equipment, the mowers that we use doesn't disturb it or disrupt it, cut up the prills. The other aspect of using a smaller grain is that we get a more even distribution and the more evenly the fertilizer is distributed, the more available it is to the plant. Everything that we do, everything, how the grass grows, how it responds to when we fertilize, what we fertilize, is all based on temperature, time of year, sunlight, if there's rain in the forecast, if there's not. Um, so weather is kind of one of those big unknown factors about our job. Uh, and that's, you know, I, I talk about challenges. That's one of the biggest things, one of our biggest challenges we have. So I get to work outside every single day. No two days are ever the same for me. Um, so that I don't have to worry about getting bored just between the different sports we have and the weather patterns and no two days, no two years, it's never the same. So it's always a new challenge every single day. And uh, for me, that's fun having the challenge and something to adapt to and overcome every day and, and learn from and grow as an individual. I always tell people, the only people outside of the athletes themselves and the coaches that can really affect the outcome of our games is us because what we do can actually affect how the game proceeds and plays. So that's a fun component of it. It's a way for me to stay involved in the sport. Essentially, I'm getting paid to watch sports. So what's not to love about that? All right, you know, I thought my job was pretty cool at Discovery Education, but your job is really cool. <laughs> and in all the years that I've been playing sports on turf fields, I never realized how much impact on the game the field can actually have. Yeah, I, I'm very fortunate in the fact that I have a great job and I love what I do. But as you mentioned, yeah, the, 
the field is critical to the game because um, our athletes, our athletes, our baseball players, our football players, soccer players, softball players, they spend hours a day on our surfaces just practicing and preparing for what they're doing. So they need to know every single day that that surface is going to be consistent and that it's going to be safe. So um, we're always evaluating whether it's too soft or too hard just because we're worried, you know, if the field gets too soft, um, there's always concern that a player could slip or fall and, and hurt an ankle or a knee. Um, and then in the inverse, if the field gets too hard, uh, especially in more of the contact sports where a, a player falls and interacts with the surface, um, we're worried about them falling and hurting themselves somehow. Mm. Um, so along that same lines, kind of one of the bigger trends now in our industry, the other thing we have to worry about, and you hear a lot of talk about it nowadays, is concussions. Um, where a player falls down and, well, either players contact each other head to head and they get a concussion, or they fall and their head hits the surface mm -hmm. and they get a concussion. So. Um, we're actually doing scientific tests to evaluate the surface hardness of a field. So earlier today you saw me using this bright yellow metal cylinder. And what this is, is this is called the Clegg Impact Hammer. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it measures the surface hardness of the field. So what you saw me do is I pick up this weighted missile, I drop it on the field, and it sends a reading to this little box here that gives me a number that I can then correlate to how hard or soft the surface is. So a lower number means a, a certain, there's a number range we work on. Um, so I know with this number, hey, the field's too soft. This number range, the field is perfectly fine. If I get above this number, then the field is too hard. So when we get a reading back from the Clegg that shows that the surface is too hard, there's remedial steps that we'll take to ensure the safety of our athletes. Um, we have machines that, we call, that are called aerifiers. They come in different forms, shapes, sizes. Um, but what we'll do is we bring the aerifier out onto the field. We run it across the entire surface, or if it's just one area that's a problem, we run it across that area and it loosens the soil back up, it's called aerating, mm -hmm. loosens it back up, allows water, light, nutrients, and air to infiltrate into the soil a little bit better and it makes it safer for them. Hmm. Well, it's very clear that science is sort of the foundation of all of this monitoring that you're doing of the turf fields. Absolutely, it's essential. Well, thinking back a little bit to the more artistic part of your job, um, we are seeing a lot of results on this poll, which is fantastic. And we, uh, it, it looks like the majority of you all think the same thing that I thought, which is that different mowers at different heights would be responsible for those beautiful designs. So tell us, Nick, is that correct? It actually isn't. It's a great <laughs> guess, though. I remember growing up before I learned about what it was um, that's what i always thought was oh they got to be just mowing it at different heights um, what it actually is is we're taking advantage of the reflective properties of the turf grass blade um, so what we're doing is we have rollers on our mowers to create the stripes um, when we do the actual hand designs like i think we showed a script aggie the word aggies written in cursive across the outfield of the grass we actually did all that work with hand brooms and push rollers and so what you do is you're taking advantage of the reflective property of the grass. So if you lay the grass down so that it's all facing away from the eye, or the way your eye perceives it, is your eye sees the sunlight reflect off the entire leaf surface of the blade. And so you get that light stripe color. And then to get the dark color, I do the exact opposite. I bend the grass over towards you and your eye sees the light reflect off of just the tips of the leaf blades. And so you get that light and dark contrast. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, all the specialty logo work, we actually do all that by hand. Wow. So those of you that picked D, you were correct. This is all done by hand, which is really incredible. And I'm thinking maybe some of the students should tweet in their ideas for what Olsen should have in the outfield next. Yeah, send them in. I'd love to see what we can do. Well, we do have a lot of students watching from all over the country, in addition to the lovely students that joined us. And they're asking questions. Okay. Are you ready to field some of their questions? Yeah, let's play ball. <laughs> all right. Um, so Stacy Kunde from Brilliant High School in Brilliant, Wisconsin wants to know, how do you plan for the weather? That is a great question, Stacy. And to give you the very honest answer is there's no real way to prepare or prepare for it because it's so hard to predict. Um, and that's one of the things like there's so much variable in the weather that basically what I do is I always tell my students, We'll prepare for the worst and we'll hope for the best. So we kind of always have, we come in every single day. The first thing I do when I come in in the morning is I check the weather. I usually check it at lunch. Before I leave for the day, I check the weather. And usually before I go to bed at night, I'm at home pulling it up the weather on my phone or my tablet just to make sure I know what's going on today, tomorrow, the day after. So we always have a plan B, a plan B, a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, um, just in case, based on how the weather's gonna turn out. Yeah. 
Well, having a plan B and C is probably good for just about any career that you're going into. <laughs> so that's good advice. Um, let's see. Anna Henderson from McGee, Arkansas wants to know, do baseball cleats ruin the turf? Another great question. An answer to that, Anna, um, not really. Uh, over the course of time, the baseball cleats can slowly wear on the turf grass, especially if it's in the exact same area every single day, day after day, day after day. Um, so like you might think of like a soccer goal mouth, for example, where the goalie's in the exact same mouth every single day for the entire practice, for an entire game. Um, it's common to over the course of time, you'll wear that down. Now, me as a turf manager, if I'm doing my job properly and I talked about the health of the soil and the health of the plant, um, if we're managing our soil properly and we're managing our nutrients and we've got a healthy, strong plant, grass is amazingly resilient. And so it's remarkable how much wear and tear it can actually hold up to. So if I'm actually doing my job effectively and thoroughly, the grass can actually hold up to anything we throw at it. Well, if you're in charge, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure the grass <laughs> is in perfect condition. Um, and then Owen Spara of Lafayette Mills in Manalapan, New Jersey is asking, how do you make the turf and what is it made out of? Okay, so that's a really great question. Um, we talked early in the show about how today we're specifically talking about natural grass playing surfaces. And at the beginning of the show, I said what that involves is, is we're dealing with millions and millions of plants that are actually all actively growing together and creating this dense turf stand that we're standing on. So essentially, there's a couple different ways. I talked a little bit earlier about how we've got cool season grasses and warm season grasses, and which you use depends on the climate in which we're living in. Mm. So once again, I'll refer to like, if I'm living in a northern climate and I'm using cool season grasses, the majority of them are, are available via seed. So just like any other plant that you might grow in your garden or in the greenhouse or a nursery, I throw the seed out on the field surface, I add water, I add the right amount of nutrients, we get a little bit of sunlight, and bam, a few days to a few weeks later, we have millions and millions of grass plants growing and we have a field. In the south, there's a lot fewer gra or seeded types available of grass um, for what we're doing, so we have to go about it a slightly different manner. Um, we'll take small pieces of the grass plant that are called sprigs, or oftentimes we'll actually take solid chunks of grass, which are called sod, and we'll spread those out over the entire surface. And then same difference over, you add the water, you add the right nutrition, and over the course of a few days to a few weeks, voila, we have a field. Well, you make it sound easy, but to those of us without a green thumb, I'm sure it'd be a little bit more challenging than that. <laughs> but it sounds like regardless, the nutrients play a critical role. The nutrients are essential. I mean, it's just like you or me, we have to feed ourselves every single day to make sure that we're happy and healthy. The same goes for the plants. We have to provide them the nutrients to make sure that they're happy and healthy. Great. Well, Steve Barton is the owner of Bonus Crop Fertilizer, and we're going to go to him to hear a little bit more about the importance of those nutrients. 